Welcome to our participants. It is a pleasure having you join us today to talk about one of my favorite topic areas and perhaps yours because some of you have already shared with me some of your interest in this area, protocol deviations, documenting, manage, and reporting. So let's first have you learn a little bit about me. I have been in clinical research for over 24 years now. I started out as a research nurse at an academic center. I've worked as a clinical research associate as well as a clinical project manager for both a sponsor and CRO. I am certified through ACRP as a CCRA as well as a project management professional through PMI. I really enjoy training because I get to share my experience to help my colleagues learn about some of the maybe mistakes that we've made along the way and perhaps also to how we can put best practices into the research trials that we are managing so we can help grow as research professionals. I'm going to share our learning objectives. So our objectives for today's session are to do the following. I will describe the components of a protocol deviation and documentation and reporting. Also, identify the individual stakeholder roles and our responsibility in the management of protocol deviation. And then also, lastly, the utilization of a process to proactively identify, track, and evaluate deviations for greater effectiveness in study management. So protocol deviations. Unfortunately, we all know that protocol deviations will occur in a clinical trial. I don't think there is a clinical trial that has been conducted that did not have a protocol deviation. Now, knowing that deviations are going to occur, I think we need to look at our practices and what we can do to prevent those deviations. And so one thing that I always look at is how well is my protocol written? So is it clear? As well as the instructions that I've provided to my investigative sites. And then also too, do my sites understand this protocol? Because typically when Individuals may not understand the protocol, or if we are asking um, the investigative site to perform tasks or duties that are outside of what I say standard of care in the clinical trial, which that often will happen, and this has not been identified by the investigative site, deviations are going to occur. So what we need to do is to put our focus or our efforts on what matters the most. And if we look at our protocol, it is written to ensure that we are protecting the safety of our subjects. So by the inclusion and exclusion criteria, we want to ensure that those patients that are being asked to join the study truly meet eligibility criteria. So that's one way we're protecting their safety. Also too, we're protecting the safety of our subjects by following the protocol, by performing procedures that have been identified. And so often when we look at the procedures that we are performing during the protocol, that is assessing subject safety. So for example, we might be assessing the patient for a response to the particular investigational product. And so if we forget or we omit doing a certain procedure, that could jeopardize the safety of our subject. But also, too, by not following that protocol and not having that data collected, we are also impacting our data, our data integrity, reliability, and its ability to be analyzed. And so I think when we look at protocol deviations, we also need to see how frequent are the deviations occurring. So we want to look at patterns. Is this a one-time occurrence or is this a pattern or a behavior that continues throughout the course of the clinical trial? <music> 